So right now, I'm in Little Burgundy, a neighborhood in Montreal, or Petite Bourgogne. Um, pretty much the black neighborhood, or the historically black neighborhood. Um, the uh, Harlem du Nord, so to speak. Um, yeah. So just doing some exploring. There's some ton of great artwork here. Ton of great little like nuggets, historical nuggets. The Negro Community Center. Established in 1926. Concerned over the lack of resources for their families, several black women in the neighborhood dreamed of having a center with the strong encouragement from their church and the funding from many pockets, they established the Negro Community Center. That's a nice little introduction of where we're at. So, I'm not too sure about like the history of the migration in this area. But I do know it's important to, uh, well, I know it is home and has been home to many immigrants from the uh, West Indies, the French Caribbean, Haiti, different islands, whatnot. Um, yeah, so the area is going through gentrification. And... Um, there's a lot of great historical significance to this area as well. The first United Negro Improvement Association chapter, the UNIA, the organization formed by Marcus, the Honorable Marcus Garvey, in Canada, was here in uh, Montreal. And in fact, we'll walk past uh, the um, UNIA office on the way here. But right now, I'm going to visit some murals that really uh, show with the neighborhood, you know, some community murals that feature uh, black art, basically. So today I'm kind of doing a black history tour of Montreal, so to speak, you could say. Uh, so I read that the community is going through gentrification like most neighborhoods, uh, ethnic neighborhoods, particularly the kind of the ethnic African African neighborhoods. I mean, Harlem's going through it, Bronzeville, you name it. So it wouldn't be a surprise that uh, it would be the same here in Montreal. So let's head over to the first uh, Muriel. Montreal is one of those cities that's uh, to need it in this community there's a lot been done in the southwest and one of those things missing from the place of the puzzle is a place for young kids to go a lot of heroes here are mothers oliver jones is a name that's pretty well mentioned around here i can't remember. I believe he was a musician but um, i have to Here's our first scenario. On community, uh, a closely knit community, basically. 2016. Most of these murals around here are pretty, are just not about five or six years old. They're fairly new. So you have the kind of closely knitted community. You have like the knitted yarn and a couple of elders.
Actually, I see it right there. I go across the street so I can get a better look of it. So that's a mural of uh, Oscar Peterson, I believe. Famous jazz musician, Canadian jazz musician. Uh, so this mural here highlights the significance that jazz music played in this area. A lot of jazz musicians from around the world uh, ventured to this area. And back in the day, just like in Harlem and Bronzeville, this area was a hot spot for uh, jazz musician and had a very important jazz jazz scene in North America Oscar Peterson pretty world-renowned I've heard of him uh, but definitely here in Canada a legend and uh, yeah he lived in this neighborhood uh, so the next mural should be Merle. Merle. It's always a weird word to say Merle. Where is the Merle at? Muhal. Should be right here actually. This is a really good mural here. Uh, it says product of the coalition of Little Bourgogne, Quartier en Santé, 2017. See, that's only a couple years old, but you see all the iconog iconography of uh, black migration in North America. You have the train, a lot of African, a lot of black African Americans and black Canadians, you know, came to northern cities by train you got jazz musicians jamming you got the street musicians you got families very urban you got the break dancers boom box so throughout the generations you can see this was you know an important geographic area in black culture and uh Yeah. There was a couple here, an older uh, kind of white couple that stopped and took a look at the uh, mural just like I did. Like I guess it was their first time seeing it. Um, yeah, but... Um, so I guess these, these uh, kind of multi-family homes here were like historically where a lot of uh, black people lived in, in Montreal uh, it was tended to be the case I know in America it was, it was like that due to housing restrictions um, but these look pretty you know well maintained they don't look like public housing you know you got across the street looks a little newer but uh yeah historical black neighborhood haven't seen any black people oh there's one i'm gonna say i haven't seen any black people yet
is brand new, man. When these murals are only a couple years old, the colors and the paint are so vibrant. Just look at the uh, skin color. It's a very, it's a very gorgeous mural right there. beautiful neighborhood you know uh, it's the middle of winter well it's not even winter yet but it's winter weather so you don't really kind of get that um, like liveliness as you might have in the summer but uh, yeah, this, is, this is like the Harlem of the north you know the Harlem of the north it's really interesting I'm not sure if Toronto has something comparable uh, to this area here in Montreal or certainly any other parts of Canada. Um, again, I would like to do like more research as to you know some of the beginnings of this neighborhood and what caused people to congregate here african people of african descent to congregate in this area centenia centenia de la bourgogne definitely uh little burgundy is a my play on the, the people that live here as well. Um, see some new, new apartment buildings here. So as I continue to walk south toward the uh, church here. I can notice, I notice how the ethnic neighbor, ethnic makeup of the neighborhood has changed just from my observation from black to more South a Southern Asian kind of South Asian population. And you see the mural here, uh, I believe that's Hindu, not sure, uh, but kind of a different, uh, different flavor from where I was just two or three blocks ago so from what I read this neighborhood is like really gentrified and uh, usually gentrification is like measured through a, a range of time but I can sense gentrification because I've seen it so often. Even if this, this is my first time here, you can see how some of the housing uh, has been um, rehabbed. It's all the little indicators that kind of show you how a, net, <clears throat> a once ethnic neighborhood is changing to you know, something more, I don't know, urban and downtown like before I get to the church I want to pass by the uh, this uh, UNIA office which is uh, right here but I, I wonder if it's, yeah, this is it. The Association Universal for the Promotion of De Noir, United Negro Improvement Association. UNIA, this is obviously isn't the original building, but
there's a plaque here that just was erected, I believe, this year. It says the UNIA, founded by Jamaican-born Marcus Garvey in 1914, was a part of a global movement to unite in power and improve the lives of people of African descent. From its headquarters in Harlem, New York, the UNIA rapidly expanded across Canada with approximately 5,000 members, 32 divisions by the early and 32 divisions by the early 1920s. The first seat, oh, the first open here in Montreal was UNIA's Liberty Hall, which is what they were called, was an important economic center for the education, economic, social, and cultural activities. The vast majority of Canadian members were West Indian immigrants who brought a strong Pan-African consciousness to the leadership of the UNIA. beautiful plaque um, so two of those members are actually uh, pretty prominent they were the mother and father of Malcolm X who met here in Montreal uh, through that organization through that chapter of the UNIA uh, Malcolm X's mother was a uh, was a uh, mixed or biracial and she met uh, Malcolm's father uh, through their work in the UNIA uh, I don't believe I'm not sure if they both were immigrants from Montreal uh, but yeah I mean, this is like this is where Malcolm's parents met got married and formed that consciousness uh, or they were they met in this African centered conscious area of Montreal which a lot of people I don't know this kind of area gets left out a lot in the in the uh, dialogue of kind of important black spaces historically speaking actually right here the, Unite, the Union United Church. I'll wait for this bus to pass. And all these buses are coming. So, so much so that uh, this church hosted Nelson Mandela in 1990 when he was out of his, uh, when he came, was released from prison. And uh, he basically thanked the congregation or the organization for their work and support and helping to end apartheid in uh, South Africa. These are some, I guess, some important church uh, members and community members as well. You have Oscar Peterson, Charles Humphrey. Should be another plaque around here. If I was here on Sunday, I would. Uh, should be open. I didn't think of. Uh, maybe given the inside of this it... hmm. maybe I should do that yeah oldest congregation in uh, in Canada there's some information here 1907, not 1919. And uh, Sidney Poitier, Desmond Tutu, Nelson Mandela, all in visited, visited the church.
I would love to see what it's like on the inside. So from here, we're gonna go back in time to old Montreal and explore uh, some, or at least an important uh, event in the history of Black Montreal and Old Montreal and uh, explore a little, little bit of that area. So hopping on the metro.